Now we will move on to some training session, uh, which will be done by Dr. Sunil Job, AA, who is the adjunct fa faculty, Marine College, Puttikar and Modern Homes. Dr. Sunil Job has over 30 plus years of experience in teaching and 10 plus years in corporate consultancy. He holds a PhD in mathematics education and has, an, has, has been an associate professor at MG uh, University, College of Teacher Education from 1999. He has I uh, started his career as assistant professor at uh, Carmela Rani Training College, Kollam. He has served as a visiting team member of NCT for grant of recognition and as a resource person for the Affiliation Renewal Committee of NG University. He's an active blogger in cutting edge technologies and IT, education, and data science. Dr. Job has also published few articles in national journals and authored a few academic books and a reference manual in mathematics. He has also served as a resource person for a number of faculty development programs in outcome-based education, data science, e-learning, etc. Currently, he is serving as the adjunct professor, Marine College, Kutikana Modern and also the chief of academics. Okay, okay. So, thank you, Sridhar, for your uh, uh, wonderful introduction. So, uh, uh, so very respected uh, uh, Rajan Gurukul sir, uh, the vice chairman of uh, Kerala Higher Education Council. Uh, respected Rajan Avagi, sir, the member secretary of uh, Kerala Higher Education Council, uh, the Reverend Father Bobby Alex, uh, the manager Marine College, Kutiganam, the principal, uh, the principal of Marine College, Kutiganam, Achimon George, sir, uh, Ramesh Patmanabin, the director, uh, Red Hat, GLS India and uh, Sark Nations. The uh, Dr. Mendes Jacob, uh, the director of uh, MCA program, all the dignitaries, uh, the professors, HODs, and uh, the faculties who have been assembled here, a very good evening. So I think that uh, now in the formal uh, this introductory section was a very uh, wonderful section which has thrown a lot of light into the outcome based education so definitely that is a stage setter uh, which makes us comfortable to see all the seven days ahead so here uh, i think that uh, this section is going to be a very wonderful section because if we just uh, have a look into our roadmap ahead we will be just beginning from the zero level that is from the basic concepts of outcome-based education. And we'll be sailing uh, into the higher levels of implementation, where in the, uh, in the sections they had, we'll be having a lot of uh, uh, experiences which has been shared uh, by the team members, by the college faculties who have introduced uh, the outcome-based education, sharing their experiences. Everything is going to be something very wonderful. And it will be an eye opener into uh, the outcome based education. So, uh, definitely uh, in this segment, as I've told that, we will be begin from the very initial phases. So, obviously, when we are starting from the zero level, uh, some things that we have uh, been hearing all this time, wherever we were uh, in any discussions on outcome based education, will pop up. Don't think that. It is uh, something a boring thing. So definitely, it will be uh, something that is uh, refreshing our thoughts. That will be helping uh, to uh, progress ahead comfortably. So uh, in this uh, uh, introductory section, we will be begin, begin uh, will be beginning with the, the learning domains through Bloom's taxonomy. Definitely, in the introductory remark of Rajan Gurukul's. Uh, has very rightly said that uh, the Bloom's taxonomy is something, uh, the center of uh, the teaching learning process, as well as the center of outcome-based education. Because if you want to uh, formulate a curriculum in the lines of outcome-based education, definitely the knowledge of Bloom's taxonomy will lead you in the right path. And uh, in the segment where there is life, that is in the interactive section, where we are dealing with the different methodologies, the different pedagogies, as Dajan Gurikal sir has been rightly saying about uh, 
the TPAC, that is the techno pedagogical concepts, uh, which could be implemented very effectively, especially in the computer discipline. So, how to formulate, uh, how to re uh, set the uh, TPAC, your TPAC, I mean the techno pedagogical content in the right way, the knowledge of Bloom's taxonomy is definitely uh, essential. And in the final phase, where we want to assess the student's attainment, that is in the uh, post-active phases of teaching learning. There also, the Bloom's taxonomy will lead you to uh, set the designs on how to evaluate the students at different uh, levels of uh, uh, this Bloom's taxonomy or the different levels of cognitive challenges. So uh, this uh, the knowledge of Bloom's taxonomy is definitely uh, something uh, essential in order to customize and tailor our uh, teaching learning activities and every related uh, activities uh in the lines of outcome -ish education so uh here we will just to begin with the bloom's taxonomy and we will be just uh, drilling uh into this bloom's taxonomy in detail into a granular level where we will be able to set questions uh, uh according to the different levels so that will be something very essential and also in the next uh, day also i'll be there with you uh, to give you some insights in the introductory uh, segments of outcome-based education, as well as uh, uh, little uh, concept ahead for mapping the outcomes in the right way. So now here we go with the, now we, here we can take off. Uh, we can be uh, going with the, the Bloom's taxonomy. I have got a, a few slides to share with you that will make the things very clear. So uh, let me share the screen first. Uh, so uh, here we uh, are on with the Bloom's taxonomy. Definitely, this is something new, which we have been hearing it for many and many times. No issues. How many times that you use? The thing is that how well you can tailor it and make it fit into the discipline that we are on. So when we think about Bloom's taxonomy, definitely the Bloom's taxonomy will be giving you a architecture on the process of learning because the process of learning is something abstract and which happens implicit in the learner we cannot uh, uh, see how learning is happened in with our naked eyes it will be expressed in terms of some behavior that uh, the students uh, elicit after the period of learning so the learning is something which happens in the students and which could be stayed on the basis of uh, the behavior that they uh, perform or the responses that they give at different uh, situations. That is how we feel that whether they have learned. Actually, the learning is something, a connection between some stimulus. Stimulus means the environment and the responses, the right responses that they have to uh, bring out in that particular environment. So the Bloom's taxonomy will uh, definitely give you a right uh, concept into uh, what is the level of learning has happened by observing the behavior on what level the behavior is being scaled. And not only that, uh, if you just uh, uh, coin, uh, take that word, actually it is being coined by two terms, Bloom and taxonomy. Obviously, this is being firstly uh, brought about by uh, Dr. Benjamin Bloom. And taxonomy is nothing but a classification. Actually, if you just uh, uh, scale, if you just uh, uh, visualize the learning process, the learning processes will uh, progress from the simple and direct level to the advanced uh, level, which will be more complex, which will be more abstract. This will be the roadmap on how the students learn. And the Bloom's taxonomy will give you a partition a classification on this uh, roadmap into different levels of learning. And that is what we are uh, going through uh, in the different learning domain. So to start with, I think it is always better to start with uh, what is learning. I've just introduced only one single slide on what is learning. So it will be better to look into this slide to understand what is learning. Obviously, uh, you can just uh, go through the statement that I have uh, given here. Learning is a process of bringing out certain desirable behavioral change 
in an individual. I have just gone and taken the most simplest statement on learning. What, what is being evident in this statement? Because wherever there is learning, there will be some change in the learner. For instance, if you're going into a class, definitely the students who are there in the class will be having some initial behavior level. And after your interaction of about 45 or one hour, definitely their level will be elevated to a higher level. That will be the terminal behavior. If both these levels are same, definitely uh, whatever that we have spent as uh, as uh, as uh, uh, facilitating of learning of teaching is uh, as gone in the future. So definitely there will be a change from the initial to the terminal behavior. And this difference, this difference will be that which the teacher is trying to bring about purposefully or desirably trying to bring about the transition from the initial to the terminal. Now, can you think of a situation just subtracting the subtracting the terminal behavior from the initial behavior? The difference between the terminal behavior and the initial behavior, that is nothing but the outcome that you have made in the class. Just if you're just conceiving it from uh, a course level, before delivering a course, the students will be definitely at some initial point. And after completion of the course, definitely they will be elevated to a higher level, the terminal point. Can you think about the difference between the terminal behavior and the initial behavior that you have been uh, trying to make up through your course? That will be definitely the course of them. And if you are uh, uh, visualizing this in a program level, the initial level when the students has come into your college for the program, and the terminal level, when the students go out of your uh, college after having spent, uh, after spending about two or three years uh, for the uh, this gra graduation program, that will be the program outcomes. So definitely, the learning is something which should uh, bring about some behavioral change in that individual. Okay. So now, if you just uh, uh, come and visualize this behavioral change. The, the behavioral change that the students elicit can happen in how they think. It can it can be something related to uh, related to the intellectual activity, which happens when you nurture the students with knowledge. So the learning can happen in that level, or learning can happen in the way in which they appreciate something or in the way that they value something, or in the way, in, the way uh, in which they set the emotions, so it can go in that way. Or the learning can, uh, can bring about some change in how they do some motor activities. So that change which I have mentioned here once could be again segregated into the change which has been happening at the intellectual level. The change which has been happening in uh, the uh, the emotional level, the attitude level, the appreciation level, the change which is happening in uh, how you are able to perform some motor activities. These are the three three uh, levels where the change is being happening. And what uh, Benjamin Bloom has done is that he has categorized uh, these three these three areas. We can call it as domain. So we, he has classified these three domains uh, into if from the level of hierarchy, from simple to complex. That's what uh, the Bloom's taxonomy is all about. So now you just read this statement. Oh, uh, before uh, uh, going and reading about the Bloom's taxonomy, this gentleman, uh, Benjamin Bloom, what he has said about uh, uh, this statement will be very encouraging. What? Any person in this world can learn. Almost all person can learn. What is, uh, I do think that it brings about a lot of uh, uh, happiness uh, as teachers. Because we cannot say that nobody, we cannot segregate anyone and say that uh, he will not be able to learn. 
yes definitely he will be able to learn he's gifted with the potentials but if they are provided with appropriate prior and current conditions of learning so that's something very remarkable thing that is everyone can learn almost everyone can almost everyone can learn if you are provided with if you are providing the students or if you're generating the right situation for the students uh, to learn and how is it possible it could be made possible if you have a conceptual idea regarding how the learning happens and that will be made clear and vivid and concise if you have a mastery on the bloom's taxonomy the bloom's taxonomy will come with a lantern with a leading light for you to depict what is the learning that you have to you are going to give to the students and what is something which you need prior to that this is something very very important so bloom's taxonomy will be very important in that respect that's why i'm told that even if we have heard about bloom's taxonomy a thousand times the thousand and one time will not be wished because it is of that worth now you can just see uh the bloom's taxonomy is a three hierarchical model what is the three all about as i've told that something that related to the intellectual abilities something that related to his feeling the change that happens in the feeling dimension and the, something that is related to how we perform something right so that is what uh, is mentioned here that is the three hierarchical model could be classified as cognitive domain affective domain and psychomotor domain so cognitive domain is something related to intellectual abilities and skill and that is nurtured by knowledge so knowledge is that one nurtures your intellectual ability so how the learning happens in that domain is been very specifically listed in cognitive domains likewise affective domain is there how we set feelings how we set emotions how we set values that is there and also psychomotor domains so while going through our curriculum constructions we are more into the cognitive domain and the effective domain and the psychomotor domain uh, will be coming as the hidden curriculum uh, in the course of our projects so we will just go into the uh, bloom's taxonomy uh, with respect to the cognitive domain i repeat that taxonomy is classification what is the classification that we have at uh, the cognitive domain obviously this pyramid this pyramid will be very familiar and i could see wherever we visit any colleges for uh, uh, ftp programs of life sections i could see that a lot of such uh, pyramids is been erected as uh, uh, what we could say that uh, uh, wallpapers uh, in every corner there i could see even in the last day when we visited hyderabad there also i could see that there is a very uh, beautifully uh, paced uh, this poster is there uh, for regarding this uh, blue taxonomy okay so as i have told that the road map between the simplest level of learning to the complex level of learning is been divided into six levels according to benjamin blue obviously let us just check about the different levels the most uh, basic level of learning according to benjamin bloom's uh, this cognitive domain is remembering and then from remembering the learner will be elevated to the higher level of understanding from that understanding level he will be going to application level from that application level he will again scale a higher level into analyzing evaluating creating so these are the levels by which a learner progresses through is uh, the cognitive ladder that is this is how the intellectual activities will be formed by the learner we will be going into detail one by one because that is something very important as i've told you the bloom's taxonomy will come as a lantern and you have to tailor your your domain into the bloom's taxonomy in your domain you are the experts so uh, once we get a clarity on this bloom's taxonomy it will be very uh, easy for you to make things uh, better and and uh, and streamline it according to the bloom's taxonomy 
So now we just consider remembering. What is remembering actually? To remember means to memorize something. To memorize something. L let me ask you what, something that how is an individual connected with his external world? Definitely, definitely it is through the five senses. Isn't it? Whatever you see, what happens? The light that falls on the objects that you see will fall on the retina. Isn't it? The falls on the uh, uh, this falls on the uh, these uh, islands. It passes to the retina uh, through the this uh, optic nerve. It will reach the central nervous system, brain, and will get deposited. Memory happens there. It will try to uh, memorize that uh, that symbol will be recorded there. If you use something that is the sound is been traveling as a sound wave reaches the eye drum, uh, reaches the eardrum, make oscillations. It will be transferred to Malasinger states, reaches the auditory nerve, reaches the central nervous system, get recorded there. Likewise, all the sensations, all the stimulus that we get from the external world are through five senses and it will reach the brain and it will be recorded there at the first instance. And that recording is the memory level learning. So at the memory level learning, you can retrieve what you saw even without knowing what is the meaning, isn't it? So what you have heard, you will be able to you will be able to categorize, recall something. That is what is happening at the very basic level. What is the next level? After that level, what is the next level? You will be uh, uh, spending some that is uh, percept. We will be trying to perceive what we have sensed through our senses, through the intellectual activity, because the man is gifted with the higher possibility of thinking. The man is gifted with the higher possibility to think, to concentrate and think. That means things meaningful to him, isn't it? So whatever which has come to his memory by the intellectual process of thoughts, he grasps the meaning whereby he passes to the next level. That is understanding. So what happens next? Next, that is, uh, whatever thing you teach, at first instance, the student may not be able to uh, understand the meaning. Uh, he will try to conceive it, uh, it into your it, the, into the memory. Then try uh, when he put it uh, uh, with the intellectual thought processes, that thing has come to the memory level. So the concept learning happens at that particular level. So what is next? So once he get the concepts, he has got some theoretical knowledge. Uh, he has got uh, uh, knowledge about the facts, concepts, procedures, all these things is been stored. It is in his mind. See, he has got a, 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 a light vision on the concepts. But if he buries the concepts in himself, it is of no value. So next thing is that these concepts that he have accumulated should be uh, brought into an utilitarian level or practical level that is brought by transferring the knowledge transferring the knowledge to some situations whereby he is able to solve the problems so whatever thing he has understood learn the meaning he have to transfer it into the real life scenario real life scenario isn't it whereby he will be able to solve his problems related to the particular uh, area. So that is applying, the knowledge applied. And uh, uh, analyzing, analyzing is going ahead above. I would like to put it as, this is an advanced level of application. That is, now you are just going and uh, tackling with a situation of a com complex nature. So how we'll be able to tackle a situation of complex nature? We will be breaking down that situation into different fragments, different fragments, and then we will be applying, applying our learning in this uh, uh, system, and we'll be trying to find out a connection between them. For instance, uh, in an engineering scenario, if something happens with the system, the system has gone down, what we do? We will just uh, try to analyze the functioning of the systems by different parts, isn't it? And we will try which is uh, the problem, uh, where is the problem, whether each component is in functioning uh, properly or whether there is any bug or a problem with that. And then you will try to establish the relationship and find out where the problem has happened. 
I think, suppose if the, your program has crashed, where uh, if you want to bug fix that, you have to go through the prog uh, program uh, by the different modules or whatever it may be, how it has been constructed uh, for bug fixing. That is analyzing. So the next level is analyzing. For analyzing, we have to make uh, uh, the compatible uh, fragments of the whole. And you have to apply the knowledge to the uh, each uh, uh, parts uh, where to identify whether it is functioning effectively and to find out the relationship between them. That is analysis. Isn't it? So the next one is evaluation. So evaluation is something high. If you want to uh, have an authentic or a genuine evaluation, you have to analyze the thing first. Then only you can pass a remark regarding its worth or uh, its uh, demerit. That is evaluation. So if you are given with uh, two, um, uh, two uh, mobile phones and you ask to evaluate, what we do is that first we will try to analyze it uh, one by one regarding the storage, regarding the memory, uh, regarding uh, the clarity, uh, the pixel, likewise, likewise, etc. A lot of things which we uh, considered and finally you will pass that this is something superior to that. So evaluation happens. Once you have gone through the entire, entire processes and then only you will be passing out some remarks. And what comes at the next level? The next level is creativity. Creativity uh, in the sense that we have to bring out something new. Obviously, when we go for uh, uh, in uh, research, for research, we uh, insist the students to go through the review of literature. What has happened? What has happened in the current scenario in the space that we are working? Why? Because then only we will feel that there is a uh, there is a problem at this level or there is a uh, deficiency at that level. Then only that will lead to that will lead to higher order thought. That will lead them to create something new. Actually, we often say that necessity is the mother of invention. How will you feel uh, there is a necessity when you evaluate the system? You will feel that these are some of the shortcomings. We have to go something ahead. So only through that will be our thought will be our th our thought process uh, will be streamlined to create something new. And uh, uh, creating is uh, uh, actually uh, uh, designing something a new thing or bringing something new. So it could be considered as some a, a research level or uh, a, an innovation that you're bringing uh, into the. Before, uh, I, I was just uh, uh, hearing to uh, Ramesh Patmanabhan, uh, probably he is uh, from the corporate world, and he says that, he says that uh, the students who are passing out of the Indian universities uh, are not uh, uh, job fit, are not job fit. They have to spend a lot of uh, uh, money for, uh, that is the revenue that, uh, for uh, uh, training the students to fit into the enterprise. And he, he was uh, showing a very much excitement that an outcome-based education can bring the real scenario into the campus so that they could very, uh, uh, very, very comfortably accommodate the students into uh, their workspaces. Why? Because, because in the traditional system, we are more confined to the first two levels. We are teaching them a lot of theories. And they, uh, knowingly or unknowingly, uh, they will sometimes mug up the things and they will reproduce it in the uh, answer paper and they get very good distinctions and pass out. And what happens that? And what happens there? It is such type of remarks. Uh, recently, I could uh, find that a lot of uh, uh, CEOs from the high uh, profile companies are telling that uh, same remark as uh, uh, Ramesh Patmanabhan has passed. And also, uh, uh, recently, um, there was a, a research, uh, probably in the coming uh, days, uh, uh, this uh, uh, Suresh Tambudri will be sharing uh, uh, you about the one of the research findings that 93% of the students are confused graduates. Because they, are, they may know that the theory, all these things will be known, but they are not able to apply it into their workspaces or they are not able to uh, uh, fix a system which is down, isn't it? So fixing the system, they should have a thorough knowledge on how to how to partition or how to, how, how to break the system into different uh, parts and to apply that knowledge and to identify whether uh, each component is functioning uh, quite well and how the relationship uh, works between the components 
uh, then only they will be able to fix the bug and get the system right. So this is something very, very important. So by this is what I am giving you is only a general perspective on how learning should happen at the cognitive level. And once we get this idea, it is our, our role is to tailor it into our workspace, our, our academics, uh, as well as I don't say that academics, I don't want to put the academics and what is the relevant in the industry in two compartments. Let it be integrated. And uh, let us give the scholars the best uh, uh, in a um, in the in the way uh, which appear uh, in the real life environment. That's what uh, uh, in the introductory remarks they have said that learning by doing, not learning by hearing. Let them learn. Let them do. Let them understand the concepts uh, so that uh, they will able to become uh, higher. Uh, they will be able to go to the higher orders. Normally, we say that uh, the first two levels, just the conceptual level learn, learning could be considered as lower order thinking skills. They are not able to uh, go higher than that. Conceptual level, okay, I get the things uh, uh, correct. If you uh, give me a paper, I will write and give the theory. Okay, But don't ask me uh, to go and fix uh, any issue. Okay, So they are, they are just locked in uh, the lower order thinking skills. If you want uh, the Q factor in your education system, bring them up to the higher order thinking skills so that they will enter into the workspaces as uh, uh, productive professionals, competent to uh, tackle any issues related to uh, their workspace. So uh, now, uh, this is the uh, cognitive domain. Uh, obviously, we are more uh, focusing into the cognitive domain. If you are going with the affective domain, how we uh, channelize our emotions, definitely uh, uh, like this, we have got uh, receiving, responding, valuing, organizing, characterizing. At this point of time, I'm not uh, going in detail about this because that is not much considered when we are forming curriculum uh, for OB. Or if you are going with the, this, uh, Psychomotor domain, definitely we have imitation, manipulation, precision, articulation, naturalization. That is how learning happens uh, at the motor uh, skill level. Th that also I have not uh, mentioned uh, at this point of time. We will be more focused on the cognitive level of learning. So now, uh, little going a little more deeper, at a granular level, we will take one by one level and just we will try to uh, put it uh, in a much more better way uh, in our academical domain. So here I, I have just uh, uh, given because uh, we uh, said that this is a learning ladder, right? Uh, uh, we can uh, go from remember, understand, just like a ladder, how we step up, up, up. So learning is a process engineered in our, uh, in such a way that one level is a prerequisite for the other, and learning takes place in a continuum. That's why in the uh, remark uh, in the opening statement that Benjamin Bloom has said. Everyone could learn, provided if they're provided with uh, the right uh, uh, the, the right learning experience. And you will be able to fix the right learning experience uh, if you are able to have an idea about. Are, are you going with uh, an application level of uh, uh, teaching experience? Definitely, you have to fill the students with sufficient concepts. If you are going with an analytical level, definitely they should be uh, uh, they, they they should be made ready to uh, an application level like that. So uh, we will just uh, go into level one by one. So the first level, obviously, we know that it is remembering. And as I've told that, remembering is uh, a memory level of learning. Memory level of learning. Obviously, when the students start learning, at, a, at the first instance, they will, try to, they, they will try to bring the things into the memory first. So at the memory level, when you are trying to memorize something, memorize something, then what is the cognitive uh, process which has been happening in that individual? That is, he will be able to uh, record something that he has uh, heard or read or something like that. The first phase is uh, he will be able to recall his ability, the re recall the events, dates, etc. So that is what uh, you could expect a student who has just reached the, the, the first level of learning, only recalling something. So uh, if you want to uh, test the students uh, whether they have uh, attained the first level of learning, we can use these verbs. 
these are the verbs that may help you for framing questions at the remembering level. So here, I am just, we are just uh, uh, talking about Bloom's taxonomy. We are just talking about Bloom's taxonomy. So in this context, if I am asking a question that list the various domains in Bloom's taxonomy, the question I repeat, list. List is something, uh, the, the verb that I've taken from here, list the various domains in Bloom's taxonomy. What does this question demand? Even if you are the uh, master in Bloom's taxonomy, this question will demand only to list the various domain of Bloom's taxonomy. So a person with mastery can write, okay, cognitive domain, affective domain, psychomotor domain. The person who have cramped, or uh, blindly uh, trying to remember this can uh, write the same thing. So this question is a question at a remembering level because it is testing the students only at that level. It, it, it is not going something above. Even if the person at a higher level, uh, this question only demands this level of uh, learning. Okay, if I ask, uh, list the data type available with Python, data types different data types uh, uh, yeah, we could uh, put with uh, Python. So if I'm asking this question without knowing what are the different data types, they will be able to know, okay, the numeric, the numeric data type, uh, there is no need to, uh, him to understand that, okay, numeric data type may contain float integer, like that, numeric data type, or uh, string, or sequence, or Boolean value, or um, uh, set, like that, uh, you'll be able to give the answers without knowing what is the uh, what is exactly this uh, this uh, uh, he is only naming the things without uh, uh, going into detail what is the speciality of the set or what is the speciality of the sequence what is the speciality of the string he'll be able to give the answers in this way just like testing the gp and also i have just uh, all uh, included one question from in a general perspective what is multiculturalism uh, this is defined multiculturalism if i ask define you are writing the statement which is given by some other persons, even without knowing or uh, without knowing the meaning in detail, you'll be able to reproduce what that person has said regarding the multiculturalism by Kram. Or uh, you can put another question, state Ohm's law. State Ohm's law. You uh, can just state uh, the Ohm's law, uh, 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 what the Ohm's law has said uh, regarding the uh, potential differences and ethnicity. You can just to state it without uh, understanding the meaning. So the questions at the remembering level is only testing the memory level, whether the, no, these, uh, the technical terms, like the ear, all these things, without knowing uh, what is there, well, without knowing the meaning, they'll be able to answer. Obviously, the next level is understanding. For giving an answer in understanding, uh, you should uh, uh, try to grasp the meaning. So at this level, what happens is that what happens is that the student understands the information, grasp the meaning, the translate the knowledge to new content, then interpret facts. All these things are the cognitive processes which is even happening at an understanding level because he understood the meaning, isn't it? So these are the verbs that may help you uh, to frame questions in this level, like describe, explain, paraphrase, restate. All these things uh, are something uh, you will be able to answer by knowing uh, what are the uh, exact uh, meaning or what is the concept behind that. The real uh, understanding will be able uh, to give the answers. So uh, the, the previous questions regarding the cognitive, uh, I, I am referring to Bloom's taxonomy because we are now discussing on Bloom's taxonomy. So before I just want you to list so without knowing uh, these uh, domains, uh, what is inside, you will be able to list these things. Now I ask them to write, explain the various levels of learning in cognitive domain. So what does this question demands? I want you to explain what are the process, what are the different levels of, which is there in the cognitive domain in detail. So now you will be able to write, okay, uh, the learning at the cognitive domain begins with the remembering level where the students will try to memorize something like that. You will be able to explain the things. That means you have understood the different levels. 
I just only totally mentioned about uh, uh, effective do the domain. Uh, I didn't give into detail about effective domain. There, you may not be able to uh, go at this point of time, uh, no, able to go into detail about the different levels, like receiving, what happens at the receiving level, what happens at the re responding levels, like that. So the former question, you have answered. But in this question, explain the variance the levels of effective domain. You may not be successful because uh, you didn't grasp the meaning. So this question will demand a proper understanding of the concepts that you are asking. Okay, explain the difference between array and uh, uh, this uh, uh, linked list. Definitely, you should know uh, what is the structure of an array. What is the structure of a linked list? That is, the linked list will be presenting the uh, will be presenting uh, this data in the forms of nodes uh, like that. You should be thorough and you can make the comparison. So you can just give uh, these answers right there. Okay, uh, in an array, you are presenting uh, the things in an index and the corresponding values, where in the linked list, we are presenting the things in the forms of uh, notes, like uh, uh, in a, um, uh, this uh, a portal, uh, you, you are going for uh, the first page to the second page, like linked. So if you want to explain it like that, you should know the meaning of or uh, the previous question, risk uh, multiculturalism, before you were uh, telling that uh, uh, the statement of uh, what some person has told, given about multiculturalism, because I asked define. But if the students are writing the multiculturalism in their own word, that means that they have understood the uh, concept of multiculturalism, right? That is, if they are able to say that the multiculturalism is just like a fruit salad, why fruit salad here? Obviously, uh, in a fruit salad, every every fruit will have got its own identity, which has been integrated in the tree. Just like that, in a multiculturalistic society, everyone is having its own identity, by which has been bound by some sentiments of feelings. So, if the students are able to uh, understand the things like this, that means we have understood. Suppose he says that uh, multiculturalism is like uh, is is a fruit salad, not a melting pot, or it is not a mixed juice. If it is a mixed juice, we are putting all uh, these fruits and then putting it to the mixer and make it as a one drink, a homogeneous compound. That is mono, mono, monoculturalism, isn't it? If he's been able to distinguish like that, that means he understood. So at an understand level. At understand level, the student will be able to express things by his own words. So that is the next, uh, uh, the higher level of knowledge. So what is the next level? Obviously, apply. So all that learning should happen for some practical utility. Without practical utility, if the students are just uh, burying it in themselves, it is of no use. So obviously, whatever thing that he has tried, learned, and understood should be transferred into some real-time situations whereby he's been able to fix or solve the problems related to that particular area. That is why, because the students who are been recruited by the uh, employers, they are not been able to perform well because they are not able to transfer their learning into the set uh, conditions, the set environment. So application level is something very important. So we have to try to keep the students to apply the knowledge into their uh, real-time environment. So what, what is this? They would have learned this theories, concept. Okay, I will, uh, I will give the theory, I will give the concept. But they want to use it in the right situation. That is application. So if you want to set questions at an application level, these verbs will be helpful for you. Uh, don't worry, these verbs will be available in the SMS. Everything will be there. Uh, it will be, uh, you will be really enjoying uh, the environment and ambience in the LMS, everything. Even this recording also will be there. If you miss the, any classes, uh, that also will be there uh, uh, in uh, the LMS. So now going to this question. Before I ask, list few, list few, uh, list the domains. Then I ask you to explain. Now, what did I ask if this level? I am asking you to frame few relate a few uh, questions related to each domain in your subject. What is actually happening here? I am not asking a question in Bloom's taxonomy. I am asking you to 
apply bloom's taxonomy to the subjects that you are handling whether it is the database or whether it is the data structure or whether it is a programming language i am asking you to transfer this knowledge to your domain and to uh, ask prepare questions so you can prepare a question at uh, remembering level in your subject you can prepare a question at understanding level that is like this so that is transferring apply apply so if you are able to apply uh, this bloom's taxonomy concept into your subject uh, in uh, in the subject that you are handling isn't it in the programming language if i ask you to prepare okay uh, one application level question if you are able to prepare an application level question then definitely you have applied the bloom's taxonomy you have attained an application level of learning in bloom's taxonomy see this question demonstrate the relationship of packages classes and methods in the program of java so obviously the students know these concepts they have to demonstrate it they have to apply they have to apply this knowledge isn't it uh, like uh, the java packages could be uh, split into the sub packages which could be uh, uh, connected to the classes then uh, a sequence of codes like that they are uh, putting it together in an environment that means they are applying the knowledge of this inheritance this class all these things like illustrate few multiculturalistic practices in education uh, because that is also going parallelly before i told define then i told restate then i asked to illustrate few multiculturalistic practices in education in your education system what are the multiculturalistic practices that you could find okay there you could see that okay uh, uh, such and such practices like celebrating uh, the festivals every festival is being commemorated in all its uh, forms and glory uh, we are respecting everything uh, we are respecting uh, that is uh, uh, likewise all the practices if the students are uh, pointing out we could say that it is uh, a multiculturalism because he has transferred the concept of multiculturalism into the real life scenario for us so definitely applying is there. applying is porting your learning into a complex scenario okay suppose if you are uh, learning about the human body it's a very complex it's a very complex uh, 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 it's a very complex thing. so in order to reduce the complexities we can divide it into divide it into okay the muscular system the skeleton system the nervous system and you can learn about this separately and then you can put it together to find out uh, the final functioning of the uh, human system so if any uh, issue has happened any issue has happened in the health uh, disorder has happened you can just uh, uh, have a specialized study regarding the functioning of this uh, uh, category and we can assemble it and to identify the final uh, position of the health and to go with the proactive steps of uh, uh, healing it likewise uh, if you are having a program isn't it if you are uh, if you are asking the student to prepare a program that is he has learned many syntaxes many concepts uh, the books concepts uh, uh, class inheritance all these things we have learned and you are by applying this uh, uh, knowledge he is preparing a program that is an application level and at an analytical level if there is a error in this program how will he identify it bug fixing then we have to uh, consider the program segment it at uh, different levels and see how the different levels is been how uh, uh, the uh, syntax of the uh, different level is going uh, how it is been functioning uh, if you are segregating it uh, and then you find trying to find out the association isn't it uh, so if a system goes wrong we have to analyze it uh, parts by parts how the parts are functioning and then only we can try to find out the association so that is an analytical level isn't it so here uh, we are just going to uh, uh, there is a question here uh, uh, this one uh, because we are in the platform of uh, uh, bloom's taxonomy i asked three questions in bloom's taxonomy list restate then i asked you uh, to frame questions now i am not asking you to frame questions i am giving you a few questions and i am asking you i am asking you what categorize these questions into various levels of cognitive domain that is something higher that is something higher why because you don't know what level the question is you will take the question one at a time then then you will just uh, 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 
the uh, try to connect it with the uh, uh, what uh, the first uh, level whether it is addressing the first level at a better way or second level the third level you are just uh, uh, analyzing it one by one one by one one by one and uh, you will try to find out which level it addresses the most which level it addresses the most and then you will say that okay this question is at an at an application level or it is an uh, analytical level or whatever it may be or uh, you can just say uh, if a student you are giving a salt for the student for uh, salt analysis what does the student do the student take a fragment of it uh, he will he will make a lot of tests like nitrate or like 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 a lot of tests will be ta taken and he will be integrating that and say that this is the salt that's an analysis or uh, if you're going with a PhD, what you finally first said, you will set the objective and each objective you will be making a different, a different compartmental wise of analysis in order to, in order to uh, justify that particular objective. So that objective will be split into different, different, different components and you'll be taking the data, analyzing it and finally uh, assuring that the objective. So that is analysis. So analysis always uh, have breaking a complex problem into parts. Then identifying the relationship and interaction between the different parts, etc. This is how this is how the analysis should happen. So breaking a complex scenario into the most uh, perfect parts, applying your knowledge into these components, try to find out how it is working and to find out the association. That is the real analysis. So if I want to put a question that analyzes the advantages and disadvantages of using uh, this uh, array list in place of array. So if you are using array list in place of array. What are the difference? So you can, how will you tackle this question? You can uh, just uh, tackle it uh, on the basis of the performance, if it is an array or list, or uh, on the type, or on the basis of its flexibility, on the on the type of type safety, or on the you know, on the basis of its dimension, the size and length. Likewise, you can uh, say you can just analyze uh, these two scenarios in different components and establish. Likewise, uh, compare the practices of multiculturalism to monoculturalism. There is two system, two social systems been given. So, what is the uh, what is the, uh, the, the, uh, the state of welfare in a multiculturalism and in a monoculturalism? What is the economical status? Uh, likewise, what is the pattern of government? Uh, what uh, how the uh, economic system will be there in both the system? Likewise, you can compartmentalize it in different different com compartments, and you can make a comparison that makes the learning. That is uh, analyzing. And now you are coming to evaluating. So when you evaluate, you are in the place of a topmost level judge. You are in the place of a judge. So if you want to judge something, you have to get the entire, the entire things. Then only uh, on the basis of different criteria, you can judge. So if you want a thorough and authentic evaluation, it is possible only after a thorough and a detailed analysis. So evaluation comes higher to analysis. So if for, uh, for evaluation, you have to uh, compare and discriminate between ideas, uh, assess the values, isn't it? Verify values, evident a number of things uh, should be uh, performed for a proper evaluation. So these are the uh, verbs uh, that helps you uh, for uh, uh, framing questions at an evaluation at an evaluation like like decide choose rank rank obviously you will be familiar because we are familiar with the uh, nir of ranking with uh, educational institutions nir of ranking or, or uh, nac accreditation what is actually happening there the throughout india throughout india the colleges are submitting their credentials for if i'm, I'm taking nir of ranking they're submitting the credentials uh, to the uh, uh, to the human resource ministry isn't it the NRF that comes under the Human Resource Ministry NRF? So they will be collecting all the credentials from all the colleges throughout the, uh, the all the Indian states and union territories, and they will be evaluating the performance on the basis of different criteria. Evaluating means they will be analyzing the performance. Okay, what is the uh, level at teaching and uh, teaching and learning uh, researches like uh, up to there are I think there are uh, five criteria are there. Uh, what is the perceptions like that? Uh, they will be evaluating, they will be analyzing the performance of all the colleges who have submitted their credentials and on the basis of their analysis, they will be putting some scores and integrating the scores and they will be fi finally 
evaluating uh, the uh, total performance and they say that oh such and such college is number one in india okay okay the if it is uh, the college criteria okay uh, the mirinda college the mirinda house is uh, is the first uh, best college in india or if you take the engineering college okay iit madras is the uh, number one college uh, engineering college in india likewise they are making they are evaluating the performance on the basis of the credentials that you are providing and ranking them ranking them from 1 to 100 they have been giving ranks or so sometimes 1 to uh, 200 the ranks will be uh, showcased like ranking the performance so that is evaluation so before evaluation there should be thorough analysis analysis means uh, different criteria breaking it into different criteria analyzing and at the next level you are evaluating so I, I will just put a question uh, that is, do you think you could prepare questions of all levels in Bloom's taxonomy in your subject? Yes or no is not, is not sufficient. Justify. Why? That is, that is it. You have to set some uh, specific uh, criteria uh, or sub, uh, you have to uh, subdivide the issues and then you have to make a very beautiful justification that only you can have a valid, valid, valid uh, uh, evaluation. And only after this valid evaluation, okay, I say that uh, this Bloom's taxonomy is not addressing uh, my topic comfortably. So I felt that there is a deficiency. So what is the next thing I have to go? Okay, go and get a new model. So my my, my cognitive domain will uh, uh, make me uh, to take a, a deviated path to think out of box for a new uh, model that could address the problem that I'm confronting. So that came only when I felt that this is not comfortable or this is not perfect this is not addressing that then only i can go to the next step that is why review review the literature review the literature that is something very important only through because of what uh, the common practices that we could see is that uh, the review literature is something area where cutting and pasting is there uh, so that is what but the genuine review will ignite your mind about the uh, issues and problems at the current context that will stimulate your thoughts to the next level of creativity so uh, uh, the give two programs to perform the okay given two programs to perform the same task justify one is better than that okay two programs has been given if you are asked to justify which is better so you want to just set okay which is having the minimum runtime uh, likewise you will be setting different criteria analyzing 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 and then uh, you will be just putting it uh, together okay uh, will this program will be comfortable in any, every environment any scenario and say that this goes something more than that okay so after analysis you will be making judgment so critically evaluate the practices of multiculturalism critically evaluate so uh, okay multiculturalism is good i will just good the put the good things as well as i will just uh, uh, go and put the uh, issues also regarding multiculturalism and the topmost level that is creating level so uh, the creating level the students are giving some innovation suppose uh, when we go for some project evaluation definitely the first thing that uh, uh, the examiner should ask that what is your innovation what is the innovation in, in this project what is the uh, that is what is something that you have contributed it isn't it so that is something very very important creating actually uh, in a paper pencil test we will not be able to test the students again against creativity uh, at a, uh, at a paper pen examination in a, a two or three hours examination you will not be able to test the creativity though many creativity come uh, uh, the genuine creation uh, the authentic creation or reasonable cre creativity uh, cannot be uh, tested in a uh, examination scenario uh, mostly that is why we are incorporating uh, projects and integrating uh, the these uh, environments that the industrial environment into our uh, uh, academics so obviously uh, uh, at uh, creating level definitely use old ideas uh, to create new ones so creativity all should come should come with new things new things not uh, any copy or paste uh, uh, like that it should come with new things that's why uh, in the present uh, researchers uh, uh, plagiarism has been treated as very very seriously uh, uh, even if you are just quoting something uh, you should write citations like that 
So uh, for researchers, it is quite compulsory. Now it is very easy to uh, get it down, whether it has been, uh, uh, whether it has been uh, transfigured. If you are taking the same thing, we have gotten NLP models for, uh, to reset our answers, to summarize our answers. Uh, obviously, there are many technologies out there, but still uh, we have got higher end applications to check the levels of plagiarism. And a plagiarism is uh, about, uh, about 20 or, or that particular level will not be accepted. Because uh, this creativity is something genuine. Some genuine things should come out. Uh, so uh, these are some of the verbs that helps you to uh, so design, formulate, all these things. Uh, will, will so uh, this is a small uh, 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 diagram which shows you. For analysis, what happens is that the complex situation is being broken to different fragments. And whereby you are applying your uh, learning or your knowledge into this fragments and try to find out relationship and what about synthesis you are learning your old learning will be put together to create something new that would suit the particular environment that you are looking for so that is creativity actually creativity uh, has got uh, an element of synthesis without knowing um, the, uh, the present status or without knowing the fundamental uh, concept regarding the area you will not be able to create it creativity needs a sound foundations about uh, the area that you're working with and you have to integrate it in order to find or design or something new. so uh, actually in the previous uh, slide i've told that uh, does this uh, bloom taxonomy works for your area definitely told that no sir it's having some issue i'm not able to fix these uh, these areas i could not be addressed by bloom taxonomy so obviously what is the next level you have to scale create a new model for classification of learning objective that suit your requirement so that is how it should go ahead. Okay, design a system to assist the drivers to using camera to detect uh, the lane markers and pedestrians while uh, the vehicle is in motion. Okay, so computer vision, a lot of things has been uh, happening uh, with the CNN uh, networks and all uh, with the machine learning and AI. So developing, designing new things because uh, especially uh, in the this computer domain, uh, especially in the computer science domain, there are a lot of possibilities of creativity uh, that could be unlocked by designing new things uh, uh, to suit the, the environments. So uh, this is uh, at an art level, develop a small presentation. So uh, we have just gone through the cognitive domain. We have just analyzed the different levels. We have just drilled into the cognitive domain to the granular level and mm, tried to bring up that domain uh, into the level of preparing questions because actually, um, uh, I would like to say that if you want to improve, if you want to improve our educational system, there is one shortcut. There is one shortcut. The shortcut is nothing but enhance the level of the questions, the assessments from lower order thinking skills to higher order thinking skills. At the first instance, definitely we feel that how the student will be able to answer this. No, definitely, uh, they have the potentials of learning. If you are creating an environment, uh, it is not bringing up some complexities in the questions, not that. Just give them an opportunity to think higher, at a higher order thinking skills, so that the students are bound to reach that particular area. And if they reach that particular area, definitely the students who are coming out of the education institutions uh, will come out as flying colors. And uh, obviously, um, the uh, CEOs uh, will be very happy uh, to have the students from such and such college, that they will come and stand in queue uh, in front of the college to get the students from the college because they are highly potential creative. And there is no much laborious act, uh, uh, term to uh, set them uh, in accordance or customize them according to their name because they are uh, proven, they have got ample experiences uh, so that they can excel them. And obviously, uh, most of the uh, these uh, examination reforms often says that uh, enhance, enhance your uh, questions from uh, what is this, what is that defined to a higher level of uh, thinking skills. So, uh, being uh, the colleges now, we know that uh, when we uh, go uh, with the uh, new education policy 2020, uh, the basic right, the basic uh, uh, vision of uh, 2020 is giving autonomy. Obviously, uh, the institutions are getting autonomy, the teachers are getting autonomy, the students also are getting autonomy uh, by the way of academic credit banks, uh, uh, multiple entry and exit. Autonomies will be the watchword there. 
So here, the institutions are having autonomy. So the institutions can have policies to set the questions, uh, how much questions to be included. That do not mean that 100% questions from higher order. That's not a good practice. We should have some questions about the 30 to 40 percent from the uh, from the construction level and uh, include more questions from the higher order uh, with uh, the restrictions that whatever possible only should be included and the rest should be covered with projects. So uh, that is uh, the uh, part of our presentation and uh, I have got few questions to be uh, to share with you to share with you. So uh, uh, I was just taking the chat because uh, at this point of time, I'm not able to see the chat. Uh, so, okay, now, this is a uh, few questions are there from different area, don't think, oh, not only computer science, because uh, uh, in every area, computer science questions are, everything is there, isn't it? Uh, can you say that, uh, which level this question is? Uh, if it is uh, remembering level, you can put K1. If it is understanding level, you can put K2. If it is applying application level, you can put K3. Likewise, uh, you can go up to K6, isn't it? So this question is, the student learns, I repeat, learns from notes. You are giving notes, the student learns from notes the answer to the question. The question is, analyze the motives of speech of Mark Antony. Oh, it's a, it's a question from literature. Uh, it's a very famous, I came to Bury C to know to praise him, whatever it may be. It's a question, uh, and uh, question why it is analytical and you are giving them notes. The student learns the notes and give a perfect answer to his own words. So what exactly is the learning level? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, more answers are coming, more answers are coming. Uh, yes, very good, very good. Though the question is a uh, analyze analytical level the scenario has put it down pull it down to a uh, lower level isn't it uh, he, if he writes it by heart we can say that it is remembering i have just added a small twist you can see the student gives a perfect answer in his own words so i think uh, both one and two could be accepted okay that's fine so both one and two could be accepted because the student learned it by heart and he understood the thing and he has put the questions uh, not in the same wordings that the professor has given. He has put the question in his own words. He understood the thing. Okay. So fine. So uh, here, uh, whenever we see uh, that uh, uh, a question solved, definitely we will go with the K3. Uh, uh, so what is, find the volume of the cube when one of the side is known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is K2, 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 because the volume of the cube, side into side into side. Instead of the side, you are just substituting the length. It do not make anything uh, more. It is just uh, uh, even uh, a memory level or an understanding level. Or if you are uh, trying to find the, uh, the volume of a big structure where cube is a part, you are up, that structure will be the divided into different structures, then it will be going to the higher application and analytical level. So, and this is only a simple instance of, uh, this is only a simple instance of uh, K2. Now the question is, validate the tool techniques and resources, validate, validate, validate. So you are given with a tool and you are asked to validate how it is performing. Okay you have to, uh, you're validating, Anal anal analyzing should be there, and finally, analyzing should be there, and finally, finally, you have to put the remark whether this tool is high or low. So definitely, it can come to a K5. So analysis is there, and what is your response? You are validating it, okay, this is uh, performing well. So after analysis, you are justifying, you are uh, giving reasons on the basis of such and such, this is good or bad. Identify algorithm and parameter to solve an engineering problem. Identify algorithm and parameter to solve an engineering problem. So uh, you are given with a problem. And you have to identify, just like you have identified which level is uh, a Bloom's taxonomy like that. Identify, identify. Very good, very good. It is careful. Identify. Because you have to know 
and you have to test it, uh, whether it's a bug, uh, bug or whatever it may be, you have to identify. Match the following inventions and inventors. Match, match the following, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, suppose if I ask, uh, uh, match the books with the author, even without reading the book, matching will happen. What is it? Match, K1, K1, match, match the following. Because if I ask, uh, give uh, uh, any two books written by such and such author, you can give the uh, name without, just like DK, uh, you will be able to give that, uh, this without uh, uh, a thorough uh, reading of that book. Okay, so fine. Design solution, design solution of a complex problem and design system components admit the specific requirement. So a problematic situation is given, and you are asked to design it. Yes, 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 creating, creating, creating. You are designing uh, uh, solutions for a problem there. So, uh, definitely, uh, just I've taken a few uh, questions uh, there. Uh, so, uh, anyhow, uh, when you tailor Bloom's taxonomy into your domain, then you are the masters. The Bloom's taxonomy only gives you something that what cognitive challenge that the situation poses on the learner. On the basis of the cognitive challenge only, we are classifying them on the basis of this hierarchy. So uh, that is all for uh, this uh, segment. And we have got, uh, those who have got uh, LMS login, there is uh, uh, one task uh, which you can do. One task that you can do related to uh, this uh, uh, segment, that is a, a question paper analysis. Because uh, we know that. Uh, uh, we want to first check what is the status of our question papers, our university question papers, or the question papers that we create. For that, we are giving a, a, a small uh, task uh, which is there in the uh, LMS, right? I, I will just uh, uh, take it now. So, uh, this is uh, uh, just an Excel template. I uh, just uh, uh, made some customization here. You don't have to do anything uh, in the right side. You don't have to uh, do anything in the right side. You can take a question paper. Uh, any question paper in the subject that you are reading, okay? Obviously, if the question paper has got some 20 questions. Now, I think there is a lot of changes in the question paper pattern. Five questions will be there and each question addressing one CEO like that. Obviously, when we go with CEO, uh, uh, things will change. So, any question paper you can uh, just uh, take from, uh, not now, uh, just explaining what you have to do uh, to those who are having LMS uh, login. So this uh, uh, template will be available in the LMS. Uh, so if the uh, if, if your question paper has got three sections, uh, you can just uh, add, uh, drop down uh, section A, uh, read that question, section A, what that question is. Uh, if it is an understanding level, you can put understanding level and put the mark. Understanding level, it's a drop down is available, you can put that. Again, here, question A. Again, there is a question A. And this question A is uh, uh, from, again, understanding level. It is two marks. Likewise, you can just check question one by one and enter what is the uh, levels of learning uh, that that question uh, addresses. OK, uh, now it is uh, a remembering question, two marks. Uh, two marks. It is a, a remembering question of uh, uh, Thomas is there. Uh, so likewise, uh, now if the question is of uh, uh, section B, okay, uh, if it is uh, uh, an application question, uh, it, if it is five marks like that, you can include. So this is the first question of your question paper, second question of a question paper. Likewise, you can just, uh, uh, you can just uh, go and uh, mark the different uh, questions. Uh, this is an analysis. If you are uh, correctly doing that, you have reached uh, the fourth level, uh, analytical level in Bloom's taxonomy, uh, which is uh, which by which you can practically incorporate or tailor the Bloom's taxonomy into your uh, domain. And here you will be getting the details. Okay, what percentage of questions? What percentage of questions are there from? Uh, uh, remembering level, uh, uh, it, it will be automated. Uh, it, it will it is it will calculate it automatically, and you will be having a picture representation. And uh, you can have remark that uh, what percentage uh, what percentage of the questions are at uh, 
what percentage of questions are at uh, uh, which level and what is your opinion regarding the question paper does it require uh, any uh, improvement uh, like this and obviously you can write the program also the program also because up by the end of the uh, uh, these uh, uh, sections uh, we will be trying to uh, we will be trying to make some analytics on the basis of uh, the documents that you submit and we will uh, we'll be publishing it so the program name the course name uh, the year the semester the question paper uh, the, and the, all these things will be available uh, here and you can write the remark save it and you can upload it in the lms so that is a task which is related to the uh, this uh, first module and also uh, there is uh, a, in the lms uh, there is also a lesson activity given uh, there is some videos you can just watch the video uh, same thing uh, regarding the bloom's taxonomy only uh, and you can answer the question so just to uh, give you a practice on the different uh, uh, learning resources that you can use in uh, learning management system so not only to know about the Bloom's taxonomy, how to integrate many learning resources, that also something very important when we come to outcome-based education practices because it is a techno-pedagogy. So the technology, how to integrate the uh, pedagogy into the technology and what all uh, practices that makes it worthy, uh, you can master it by going through the LMS. So I, I think that uh, the section has uh, become uh, 31. I have exceeded one minute extra.